Today we're going to draft a little capelet that I'm going to use to make a bed jacket. And we're going to start with just a big piece of pattern paper, tissue paper. I've taped together two of mine because my pattern paper is like 21 inches wide, which is probably going to be wide enough. I'd rather have it too big. And I'm going to use this. Um, I'm, normally when I show you how to do patterns, I do them in half scale because it's very easy um, for me to manipulate and easy to keep it in the screen. But today we're going to actually do a full scale pattern manipulation. And I'm just going to pull out the bodice front and bodice back out of this because we just need the little neckline part. Really, we don't need very much. We're just going to use the neckline as a starting point. So I'm going to pull those out really quickly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just tracing off a little bit of the center back neckline and shoulder for the front and the back and I'm actually going to join them at the shoulder so I'm going to ignore this um, dart that's in here and I'll show you how I do that. I hope you can see through this okay. I've got this other board down because I just like to have the um, the markings on it. I like to have that grid that's very helpful when I get ready to do my pattern so I'm just going to trace this off. I'm ignoring the seam allowance for now. I just need the actual stitching lines. Now I'm not going to make my neckline this high when I go to do it and I'll show you why. And so I just slid over past that dart. I'm just going to finish up the shoulder. So here's the back. And now I'm going to take this. Can you see that okay? I'm going to take that. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to line up the shoulder to the front. Now these um, patterns, one of the great things about them is that they come in cup sizes. Oops, I have this upside down. There we go. So that you can get the cup size you need. Now I'm not as worried about that with the cape as I would be with other things, but here we go. We're going to just do the front neck now and give me a little bit of a center front. You can always tell your front frame or back on something like this because the front dips down more than the back. This is our end of our shoulder. So now I have this that gives us our neckline and our shape. So we've got a basic shape now that we can work from to get our cape started. So I didn't even cut these pieces out. I'm just tracing off the part that I need. And I'm eventually going to fit this to my size and make hard slopers out of it, but not today. Get that out of the way. And I'm just going to cut this piece out. So here's our little neckline, and because of the project I'm working on, I'm actually going to be applying this pretty little lace collar. So my neckline needs to. Oh, look, it's, it's attached. I just opened it. You can see where it's crocheted together right there. So we need to snip those apart. Oop. I snipped right in the middle. And if you look at this, can you tell a front and a back? Can you see the difference between the front and the back? This one has a big flower and this one has a little point and you get to choose. Like you could use either one, um, whichever you would prefer to be your front or your back. So here's the front of my shirt or my cape and this is this little collar is going to have to fit on that neckline. So there you can kind of see how the collar is shaped. And this right here is the shape of the pattern currently. So I'm using this to help me know that I need to change this neckline ever so slightly so that this collar when sewn is going to match up. So it needs to be a little lower in the front and the back. It's fine at the shoulder. And because of how it's made, it doesn't shape. Like, I could pull this in like this to get it to fit a little better, but you can see how it ripples. And I probably could get that to stitch down, but it's not going to lay as pretty as I want. I think I'd rather just alter the neckline ever so slightly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use this to help me know this needs to come down here and here. Just that much. And then I can regrade this. And now I have a neckline shape that matches my collar. And now this is going to go away. 
Now I don't want to lose a lot of neckline. I, I intentionally chose a collar that I knew was going to be pretty close because I want this to fit fairly close to the neck. But now I have a shoulder, which is all I need. But I'm doing a cape, and if I do it like this, it's going to be too fitted. I really need this to, to flare a little bit more, almost a half circle. So I'm actually going to bring this around, and I'm going to show you how. We're going to change this really quickly. I'm going to put some tape along this neckline. And we're going to just draw. You've seen me slash and spray. So I've got a shoulder line I can cut through. And I'm going to just do a few more cuts like this. Front. Now there's no seam allowance on this. I took it away when I traced it off. We're going to just slice up. I'm going to actually cut through this on my new neckline. I'm going to get rid of some of this to make it a little less to work with and make it a little easier for me so I don't get confused. Now this, I'm making a bed jacket. But you could make an actual cape. You could use this for a Halloween costume. You could use this to make a beautiful winter cape. Lots of options when you're doing this. So now I'm just going to slice up on each of these two, but not through uh, my little neckline up here. And now you can see how that's going to move around. And I'm going to do it a couple of times. This is my shoulder where I did that little bar on it, and I did it on purpose so I can keep track of where things are. And I'm actually going to do another bar up a little higher because I'm going to cut through it <clears throat> just to help me. So here's my little piece with the slashes and spreads and I have drawn my line up. This is my center front, or my center back, I'm sorry, that I've drawn up. It could be either one, but I'm going to start with the back here. And here's my shoulder seam. I've got my little crossbars to help me. And I really would like to make this um, so that I can cut the back on the fold and then cut out two fronts. So I'm going to have a seam here at the shoulder. I'm going to cut the back on the fold. So I'm just laying this down and looking really quickly. I've drawn down here. I want this to be about 17, 18 inches long finished. So I've drawn this line is at 17 inches. That's how long this line is here. And I've moved it over so I have room for seam allowance if I need it. I don't need it for the center back because it's going to be on the fold. And I'm going to lay this trying to get a good 90 degree angle, which is what this grid below helps me do. And it could be slightly less than 90, like you could have it just a little bit less than that. That gives you some shape at the shoulder if you want it. And I'm just tracing this little bit of neckline. And I'm going to trace this shoulder. Now I could make this a full circle and that would work if you have wide enough fabric, and I'm not certain that I do. So let me just move this. Can you see these lines? So now I'm going to use those lines to trace. So here's my 17 inches, and I'm going to come down. Make sure I did 17. I did almost 18. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go to the 18 mark because that gives me a little extra to work with. So we're just going to come straight down from that neck and mark at 18, like this. Now, 18 inches on the shoulder for me may not be long enough. Depends on how long you want it at the shoulder. So I'm going to just mark, measure myself real quick. Here's 18. And that's going to be about where this sleeve is. Okay, that's actually great. I can live with that. And now we're ready to just start joining up these markings. I'm going to make a bunch more to make my 
polka dots easy to matching up. And this shape is going to be the same shape as that neckline. So if you have a wonky neckline, you're going to have a wonky hemline because that's what we're following from. I will smooth this up better in a minute, but I'm going to just do this so you can see the shape. I'm going to move this out for a minute. And there you can see the shape. This is my center back, and this is my side. See? And that way I can keep track of it. So I have one pattern piece drafted. It's just wide enough, it just went over a little tiny bit in my pattern paper, but that's fine. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing for the front. Now this one's going to be cut on the, on the fold, and I have to add seam allowance still, so but I'm going to go ahead and write that on here. And then I'll come back and add my seam allowance. And I know that for this, I'm buying a... Um, fabric that you'll see here in just a minute. I know that because I'm doing a um, a, a pre-quilted fabric, I'm not quilting my own, I'm not lining this, I'm actually just using bias. Okay, I'm using a pre-quilted fabric so I don't need very wide seam allowance because I'm going to bias, I'm just going to trim it in bias. I didn't have to take these together now that I'm playing with this. I thought about making it one big piece and then I realized I don't think my fabric is wide enough to do it that way, so I changed my mind. Let's come down here and draw our 18 inches and see if we have enough on this piece of paper. Let's do our 18 inches and make a line. And then we can take this and Oh, got to move down. I'm going to have to remake my 18 inches. There. Okay, so I'm going to trace my neck and make my little marking for my shoulder. And I'm going to draw the shoulder. Oh, I'm so close, but not quite. See, I'm going to have to add down there. But now I've got the beginnings my pattern and I can start marking it off. So this is center front and I'm going to cut to this is shoulder. Okay, I'm going to tape on a piece over here. Get our 18 inch mark. I have an 18 inch ruler so that makes it easy. All the way down to here. There's our 18 inch mark. Alright, and now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to come down and mark 18. And we'll have a front and a back, and then we're ready to add our seam allowances. You could easily, let's say you wanted it longer on your arm, you could easily change this and elongate it out to have it a little bit longer. I like sort of a three-quarter length. There we go. Okay, I can tell this is another piece of tape. Right there. Okay, so now we're going to add seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and move this out because I think it's easier for you to see. So I'm using... Um, bias tape. So I'm only going to put on here um, half inch because that's how wide my bias tape is. Seam allowance because I'm actually going to trim it all out with the bias on the inside. So here's my shoulder, half inch shoulder seam. I'm going to actually put that on here. Half inch seam allowance. And I'm not going to even put a hem on it because I'm going, again, I'm going to trim the hem. I'm going to do two trims. I'm going to trim 
with bias and then I'm going to put lace on there. Center front will need a seat. Now I have this meeting at center front. You may want an overlap and if you do this is where you'll draw this out however much overlap you want um, or if you're, it depends on what you're making. If you're not making a bed jacket, this is Halloween costume meeting at center front is usually fine. If you're making a cape that you're going to wear, like a little car coat type thing, um, you will probably want it to overlap so that you can put in buttons and buttonholes or a zipper or even if you just want it to overlap enough to, um, to just stay closed, I'm going to have my meat at the front so I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to put on here. So I have to decide now, do I want this to just meet or do I want to have a little tiny bit left over? I know I need the seam allowance at the shoulder. I don't really need it at the neckline because again, I'm going to have my, my bias there. So do I want to have some at the neckline that I, I probably do. I'm going to put some at the neckline that's going to fold to the inside and I'm going to make it less than, so this is the, You've got to think through your construction at the same time, or maybe think through it ahead of time. <laughs> okay, so I've only got three eighths at the neck, because I'm going to actually slash through this neckline. I'm going to sew in my bias, slash through the neckline, fold that to the underneath, and then whip down the bias on the inside to finish off that neckline. This will have bias down the front with lace. Um, bias here, I only need a shoulder seam here, an actual overlapping seam. So that's all the seam allowance I need to do from, for both pieces. There's my center front. I'm going to do the exact same thing on my center back. Now if you're, again, depending on how you're choosing to do this, you may need seam allowance everywhere. So here's my side seam. And I straightened out my seams. You could have a curvier seam at your shoulder and side. Um, for fitting purposes, but I've straightened mine out. Okay, and then I'm going to do my 3 8 here. This is on the fold so it doesn't need anything. And let's hope that fits with my fabric because I'm pattern making before my fabric arrives. And I know it's wide, so we'll see. 3 8 inch. Alright, so there's my two, my pattern pieces ready to sew up. Super simple. You could easily, now I really was concerned about my neckline shape because I have these little collars, but if you just are doing more of a costume type thing, it would be very easy to take a pin with a string and just use that pivot point and mark off your string with a string and get a perfect circle and then just come down and do a narrower one for your neckline and you're done. Like circles, skirts, circle, capes, things like that are really easy to draft. I'm doing mine a little more complicated because I wanted the neckline shape just so. But otherwise it's really basic and will be fast to sew up. See you next week for another fun video.